This is the Morning Swim Show for Monday, April 16th, 2012. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings, sitting in for Peter Bush. Today in the Finise Monitor, we have a Canadian who is getting ready to swim in the Paralympics for the fourth time. Benoit Ouat joins us now in the Finise Monitor from Montreal. Ben, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Good morning, Jeff. I'm really good. How good. are you tell? I'm doing great, thanks. So, um, doing really well. I could see in the pool at the Canadian Trials, you broke your own world record in the 200 IM. 21026 were you surprised by that well well that that was the goal uh, you know my, my best time was a 211.2 and uh, i didn't you know i was uh, yeah you're right i was a little surprised uh, i didn't think i could um, you know lower the time by a full second especially uh, you know where i am in my career it's uh, i'm at 28 you know towards the end of my swimming career so uh, uh, i uh, i will take it for sure but now you know the next goal is to trying to go under 210 maybe uh, We'll try to do that in London, but uh, yeah, for sure, 210.2 .2 was, uh, was a good surprise, but I really felt I was in the zone. I, I, I had a great swim, and everything was, a sm was smooth. Every transition between as well. It's well, a that's exactly what you want at trials, right? That's right. That's right. Exactly. Now, a lot of people uh, may not know your history. Uh, tell us about your specific disability and how that classifies you as a disabled swimmer. Yeah, well, I was. Um, it's a good question. I was born with a small disability uh, called a club foot, and uh, to just to give you, um, you know, an example of what my disability is, it's when I was born. Instead of uh, let's say those are my feet, instead of having my feet in the right direction like normal people, this foot, the right one, was you know inside out, so in the wrong direction. So I got a surgery right from. Uh, right from uh, when I was born and they restructured the foot, re put, the, put the leg in the cast for the first 18 months and my disability today is presence between my knee and my foot. So I have the leg, I have my foot, but between the knee and the foot everything is smaller. Uh, not much muscle mass in the calf, a foot that is much smaller than the other one and the reason why I could compete at the Paralympics is because uh, I don't have much mobility in the ankle. I can move my toes properly but I can't, I can't move my ankle properly. And what's important to explain is uh, there's different categories in Paralympic swimming. For physical disability, there's 10 different categories, and I compete against uh, athletes in the same category as mine, which is category number 10, which is the closest to able body swimming. And more the number goes down, more severe is your disability. So what does it mean for you and other disabled swimmers to have your trials at the same time and the same venue as able-bodied swimmers? You know, it's, um, we're quite lucky. You know, the, the, the uh, Swimming Canada was one of the first, uh, first nation in the world to really integrate both uh, able-bodied trials and para-trials. And now, you know, we, there's a British doing the same thing. Um, they did that a month ago in, in, uh, uh, at the London, you know, the, uh, the Olympic facility. And uh, the, the Australians did the same thing as well. But there's a good and a bad way to it. Um, uh, why I say that is because, well, it's great the fact that we are in the same pool. Uh, I can swim my 100 freestyle, you know, right after Brent Hayden's 100 freestyle. But at the same time, I'm not sure if... It's for the best interest, uh, the best interest of our movement, which is the Paralympic movement. Because that being said, when it's um, when I'm with Brent Hayden, you know, right after Brent Hayden's swim, well, you know, the attention will, of course, will be on Brent Hayden's performance, and sometimes we, you know, we will will be in the shadow of those performance. So it's the same thing as um, as when we are at the Paralympics or the, the Olympics. Uh, I truly believe that you know, the Paralympic movement needs to grow, but I think we should change it in a way that uh, it should be before the Olympics, not after the Olympics. Um, just, you know, when, when you go to a concert, you, know, you don't see um, a small little band before uh, or after U2. You see the, the small band or the, the growing up band before U2 and after you see U2. And it's, and it's the same idea that I'm, I'm trying to have. You know, you, you don't want to see my 100 freestyle after Michael Phelps' 100 freestyle. You want to see, uh, you want to see my 100 freestyle before Michael Phelps. And two weeks later, you know, the, uh, the media and seeing Michael Phelps swimming is, uh, it's the same kind of idea that, um, that I like to promote 
uh, increase the awareness of the Paralympic movement. So there's a good and a bad way to it because yes, of course, we have all the people in the stands, all, you know, more attention. But at the same time, in the next, you know, 50 years, we need to make sure that the para movement uh, increase more and more, and we really um, need to have our own uh, movement, not you know, trying to combine both of them. So essentially, what you're saying is the Paralympic Games should be before the regular Olympics, and it will help increase not only your exposure, but also um, help people bring to, it brings to light the uh, accomplishments of a lot of the Paralympians. Yeah, well, you know, I, I think um, the fact that it's after, um, what, you know, it's, it's, it's really hard for us to make our, our, our point or, our, you know, have, have our, our position uh, in, in, around the world. Uh, why, why I say that is because, you it, it's so intense. You guys in America, you know, on NBC and here in Canada, there's so much attention for those 16 days during the Olympics that after it's over, well, people are tired sometimes to see sport on TV. And the fact that if it's before, it would be like kind of a rehearsal. Uh, and I take, I, 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 by saying that, I say that, you know, we don't, um, we're not as big yet as the Olympics, but that's the goal. You know, we, 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 we're trying to grow. So the fact that it's after, I don't think it's helping our movement. If it would be before, uh, well, it would still give us more visibility because you guys, the journalists, would come and see us because, you know, uh, it, it, it's, it's important because, you know, the, the, the parent movement is growing. But you would still stay there after because the big show's coming. Michael's coming to win, to win all his medals. You know what I mean? So it's, it, this is kind of uh, the, the idea and my hope and I'll try to, you know, to, 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 to no, I'm, I'm not sure it's going to happen. There's so much policy, but that's something that I would love to see one day. I'm not going to see it as an athlete, but I'm going to try to work for it and try to make, uh, you know, make that change in the next 50 years. Yeah, those are very interesting ideas, Ben. I really, I really think you got something there. <laughs> so uh, tell me what your uh, training regimen is like up there in Montreal. Um, you know, it's, um, I've been lucky, uh, it, I've been swimming with the National Swim Center in Montreal um, since, since 2006, which is only uh, able body, uh, and four of them made the Canadian uh, Olympic team, so uh, what's, what's really good about this for me is that the fact that I can train on a daily basis with athletes that are much faster than me, especially on the kick, you know, the, the, when we do uh, the kicking, uh, and it really pushed me to, to try to, to be as fast as them, and the fact that, uh, you know, sometimes I have weakness and slower, well, uh, I want to be like them, so uh, it makes me fit, swim, swim faster. So that's really a, a great, uh, great chance that I have. Great support staff. We have, you know, our two, two swim coach. Um, we, uh, with, you know, Olympic, past Olympic experience, we have a weight trainer, a nutritionist, sports psychologist, um, massage therapist, you know, there's, there's a big team around us, all of us at the National Center in Montreal, and it's, you know, we, uh, sometimes it could go up to, you know, almost 40 hours a week at the pool, uh, or, they, or only day off is Sunday, like most of the swimmers, and um, uh, it's not 40 hours every week, obviously, because, you know, we, uh, uh, we, we have taper, uh, taper time get, getting ready for, for uh, the major events, but uh, quite, uh, intense regime of training. Uh, I would say about 60 to 65 percent spent in the water and the balance would be spent in, in, the, in the gym. But um, it's, really a, it's a really a global uh, type of training regime that we have with all sort of uh, support behind us to try to maximize the performance. Now as I said before, you're going to your fourth Paralympics in 2000 and 2004, you, were, you did really well, won a lot of gold medals, but in 2008, you only came away with some bronzes. I would imagine now heading to London, you've got a, a little bit of a fire lit under you. That's right. You know, that's, uh, that's the reason why I'm still there. Uh, Beijing wasn't the greatest meet of my life. Uh, I was a little bit, I w uh, not a little bit, I was disappointed after I get, got back from Beijing. And um, this is why I'm still there and uh, trying to, you know, trying to do well. Uh, I'm not, you know, of course, you know, gold medals are great to have, but I'm not thinking about them for London because I've been disappointed in the past. I'm just trying to go to London and go personal best times. I'll be competing in five individual events, which is uh, 100, 400 freestyle, 100 back, 100 meter butterfly, and the um, 200 individual medley. So what I'd like to do, London, 
go five personal bests. And if the medal can follow, that'd be great. But I can be more happier with five personal best time for London. Who do you think will be your chief competition in London? Um, I believe, well, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of guys that uh, can fight for the, the top, uh, the top position for, for the, for, for my category in London. But the main, the main uh, swimmer, which is uh, my, you know, a great competitor, uh, really, he really put, the, you know, brought the bar higher in our, in our category in Paralympic swimming. Uh, and he, he became a good friend and now is, uh, is a Brazilian swimmer named uh, Andre Brazil Estevez that came along in 2006 and now holds most of uh, the, rec the world records in her uh, in her swimming category and uh, he's really going to be the the swimmer to beat. But you know there's a there's a great American as well, uh, Justin Zook in backstroke, that uh, you know won the gold in Athens and Beijing in that race. There's a, there's a British swimmer, there's you know a bunch of uh, Australians. So it's uh, it's really getting uh, more competitive and international um, um, and it's great it's great for the movement. I would imagine just like uh, able-bodied swimmers, it's not easy training those 40 hours a week and still be able to um, you know, pay the rent as it were. How do you support yourself? Yeah, that's a yeah, good question. You know, there's um, we're, here, here in Canada, it, it does uh, all national team members on Olympic or para side, uh, summer and winter um, Olympics and Paralympics, we get funded by the um, um, federal government. So we, we get monthly uh, payment from the federal government if you're uh, on, the, on your national team. And um, some provinces, so you know, instead of states, it's provinces here in Canada. And we, 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 we can get as well some help from each province, which uh, where, where I am here in Quebec, I do get some help from them. And I've been fortunate as a Paralympic athlete to, uh, to find a couple sponsors. Um, the fact that what really helped us, I believe, in Canada is the fact that we, uh, we had the uh, Vancouver Winter Olympics back in 2010. And those... Um, those private sponsors that were associate with the Winter Games back in 2000, back in 2010, they um, they, they really started to um, to invest into Paralympic athletes, uh, winter and summer. And I was I was in in those athletes that you know had the chance to be selected. And there's you know I've been lucky to be with uh, great sponsors like Visa um, for for this summer for London. But I've I've been with them for over six years. So Visa, RBC, which is a you know or our biggest bank here in Canada. Uh, RBC and Speedos, you know, I've, I've been the, uh, the first para athlete to be sponsored by Speedo here in Canada. So uh, I've been really lucky. And um, of course, there's still a lot, a lot of work to be done, not only uh, as an individual, but as a, again, as a, as a movement and as a, as a cause, you know, we, we need to make, uh, increase the awareness of, of the Paralympic uh, athletes and, and our movement and try to get more um, of the uh, of the private sector invest into uh, our cause but uh, it's it's there's a it's, there's been a big um, change into uh, uh, into the last decade and last 10 years uh, in in the help of para uh, of para sports but uh, that's that's how I can um, go through my living and pay for my training camps competition um, and so on and there's another oh yeah I forgot to mention all the support that we get it's it's expensive right and we get we get help from um, a great program that became um, through uh, with the Vancouver Games called OTP on the podium and we that program really, really helped the athletes for the winter game back in 2010 to win the Olympics with 14 gold medal here in Canada the overall gold medal um, count and um, the uh, that program continues now for the summer athletes so we're, we're supported by that great program which is funded by most by family as well and um, there's other programs like B210 um, more, more. Uh, it's, it's small, but uh, really focus on some individual that has a great chance to go on the podium for uh, for the Olympics and Paralympic Games. Well, knowing that you have this great um, financial support system, do you think you'll continue on with swimming until 2016, or will this be the last hurrah for Ben Watt? Uh, well, <laughs> I um, I'm getting a little older, uh, but. Uh, I'm I'm so lucky to be able to do. Uh, I, I I really try to enjoy each day and and every workout and every swim meet and enjoy the process of uh, of doing it. And I don't want to say yes for Rio. I'm really you know I don't want to say no either. But uh, I'm really focusing on uh, the next hundred you know 
30 something days, 39 days for the Paralympics and focusing on London and we'll see after. But uh, like I said, don't want to say no, don't want to say yes because four years is a, is a quite a big commitment. And uh, I do have, you know, five class to, um, to, to, uh, to go to finish my, uh, my degree and finish school. So uh, that will be for sure my main focus right after London, trying to finish school because uh, I'm almost 30. But um, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe a couple more years into me, but uh, focusing on London now and we'll see what happens after. What kind of degree are you studying for? Uh, doing a, a degree in uh, communication and minor administration. So, but it's it's in, in a French university here in, Mon here in Montreal. Well, Ben, I appreciate you talking to us today. Really good insights into the Paralympic movement, not just up there in Canada, but what could be um, possibly changing around the world. And um, it's great to see such a uh, great ambassador like yourself um, leading the charge. Well, thanks. Thanks very much for uh, for your advice and 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 then take taking the time to talk to uh, t talking to me uh, this morning. Thanks, Jeff. And it was we'll my talk pleasure soon. and uh, best of luck to you in London. Thanks. All right. So that's Ben Watt joining us from Montreal. We'll look for him at the Paralympics in London. That's going to do it for us on today's show. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.